Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When we were trying to get this podcast off the ground, we had so many questions. How do we record an episode? Where do we find background music? How do we get our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other places that people like to listen? And where do we find advertisers? The answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, distributing, and monetizing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and 100% ridiculously easy to use. Anchor makes it simple to get up and running. You can upload and schedule your podcast ahead of time. It publishes to all the major podcast platforms. You can easily check your stats. I could go on and on, but instead, why don't you go and get started? Go to anchor.fm slash start to join the e-commerce minute and a diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. We can't wait to hear your podcast. It's the E-Commerce Minute, your daily dose of e-commerce, tech, and retail news with your hosts, Bart Moraz and John Suter. The E-Commerce Minute is a production of Sumo Heavy, a digital commerce consulting firm in Brooklyn, New York, and Philadelphia. Find us on the web at sumoheavy.com. This episode of the E-Commerce Minute is brought to you by Framology. Framology is simple, beautiful framing for the photos you love. Pick a frame, upload a photo, done. Start shopping at framology.com. It's e-commerce minute episode three five eight. In today's episode, Marie Claire uses editors to drive e-commerce. Fashion magazine Marie Claire is using its editorial clout to drive e-commerce sales. The magazine has recently launched Marie Claire Edit, an aggregator site where readers can shop from retail partners like Selfridges, Gucci, Prada, Netta Porter, and Topshop, as well as follow the trends of the title's fashion editors. The site was designed to boost the magazine publisher's e-commerce revenue, and its tagline reads, Shop the brands you love, fashion editor approved. Shoppers can browse sections like the major knits to wear right now, the checked blazer upgrades you'll need this season, I know you want that one, Bart, Mm -hmm. and the shoes we can't wait to buy. Each section is presented in an editorial fashion with large photos, copy, and links to products for purchase. Six of Marie Claire fashion editors will write daily features exclusive to the site from which users can click and purchase products. Marie Claire generates revenue via affiliate partnerships, although the actual split is not known. Emily Ferguson, Marie Claire's head of fashion affiliates, told Digiday, it's a 360-degree approach. We're working with affiliate advertising and editorial so we can keep the brand identity in keeping with our strength of engaging audiences. We've developed new touch points for purchase and ad formats to sell into. Marie Claire editors will also select a number of items to endorse with a Marie Claire edit badge, licensing the Marie Claire brand on the retailer's store or site. The publisher will also use targeted ads on the edit site, and the main Marie Claire site wants more audience data has been collected. Pretty interesting. John, you made me just hungry with Marie Eclairs. <laughs> Marie Eclairs. <laughs> Prior to uh, pr- what you may believe, they do not actually sell Eclairs. It's Marie Claire. Which oh, <laughs> the European fashion magazine. Gotcha. I know who they are. I'm just kidding. Um, all right. Well, I guess content driving ecom, huh? Yeah, I I kind of like this idea, although it concerns me that they may be taking you know these poor writers. I wonder if this is just do they get paid extra for this? Do they get piece of the the piece of the pie? <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably, probably not. Do they do they get do they get to test the products out? That'd be fun. Pro, well, probably. I mean, I I think that's one of the perks if you work in the fashion business. You get to work in cool locations and you get to be around cool people and and uh, see a lot of beautiful things that you can touch and probably, you know, have for, and hold. For absolutely no money. Lot, I just don't think you make a lot of money, <laughs> especially if you're working for a magazine these days because the, we all know how the magazine business, everything seems to be going digital. So this is a natural progression for a print, you know, a print magazine. Marie Claire has been around, uh, it's first published in France in 1937. So they've been around um, a very long time. So I think... Uh, you'll see, I think you're going to see a lot more of these aggregator sites pop up. We actually do have a couple stories that are um, in the queue about these types of sites related to fashion, which is pretty interesting because I think a lot of this, this fashion type shopping is going towards recommendations and Pinterest type collections and boards. I think that's, that's kind of the way it's going where it's not so much, I'm just going to go shop one brand. I'm going to shop an aggregate of brands so that I can shop the, the type of things that I like and they don't have to be all from the same manufacturer or brand. Yep. 
That sounds about right. So I also read that search is a big traffic driver for Marie Claire and accounts for 86% of the magazine's referral traffic, which is pretty incredible. So I guess that follows on what I was saying is people are not searching so much for one particular, you know, I'm not searching for, I don't know, a lady's brand, but um, one certain thing. But in fact, they're, they're searching for many different things and winding up on, you know, Marie Claire to, to see the aggregate of that. Right, uh, and I think a, a thing like edit it just makes total sense. We'll post the, we'll post the link to the edit site on our website, ecommerceminute.co, and you'll see that it's written in an editorial form. So you have nice big lead photo, an article, and then some products to buy. There's two dangers here. The two dangers are you only have a couple seconds to get people to buy. So somebody may come to the site just to read the article and get used to seeing the products at the bottom and kind of zone out, or they just won't they just won't click at all. So it remains to be seen how much value you have there if, if they don't click. So right. um, like I said, we're going to see a lot more of this editorial type content though, because people have to get more creative, especially in these magazines uh, in the digital space. It's the yeah. I mean, I, you think that Buzzfeed basically just opened the floodgates of this kind of stuff, right? That, that is a great comparison. I hadn't really thought of Buzzfeed. It's funny because Buzzfeed started out as such like a sp- like that spammy, you wouldn't believe what happens next kind of right. stuff. And now they've grown into this news powerhouse and they do a lot of e-commerce stuff and it's, they've really um, made their brand. It's unfortunate that they're called Buzzfeed because if they had like a better name, um, I don't know. But, you know, I mean, the, I get a lot of news from Buzzfeed and I see a lot of cool yeah. things on Buzzfeed. So I, I you know, I, I kind of, I, I like that brand. I just don't like the name. Um, that's that's my two cents about BuzzFeed. But anyway, so Marie Claire's been around for a long time, and uh, I'm going to try this e-commerce initiative. Bart, do you have anything to add? That is there. That's it. All right. That's your e-commerce minute for today. Full show notes are at ecommerceminute.co. We'll see you on the internet tomorrow. That's it for today's show. If you like the show, do us a favor and subscribe, or leave us a review on iTunes. And don't forget, you can now listen to the e-commerce minute on your Amazon device. Just add e-commerce minute to your flash briefing. And finally, if you have a comment or suggestion or just want to say hi, find us on social media at Sumo Heavy.